Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free. With golden soil and wealth for tar, our home is girt by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty, rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair. In joyful strains, then let us sing Vice-Chancellor, fellow council members, staff of the university, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. A graduation ceremony is an important and happy occasion for members of the university community. To all of you, I extend a very warm welcome. To the graduates, I offer my warmest congratulations. The completion of a university degree is indeed a fine achievement and one of which you should be proud. For you, today is a great day of celebration. To the families and friends of the graduates, while the university cannot offer you an award as well, we do recognise the enormous contribution you've made in supporting your loved ones through the highs and lows of their time as a student. You're about to witness something very special, the reward for all that effort. The success of the university is measured by the quality of its graduates. Survey results show us that employers are very happy with the quality of our graduates and our graduates have a high level of satisfaction with their educational experience at the university. The University of Newcastle is committed to preparing graduates who will make a significant contribution to society, are adaptable global citizens and are sought after by employers. To achieve this goal, the university is innovative in its approach to teaching and learning notably through problem-based learning in which the university is a pioneer and more recently through developments in online learning. In the area of research performance, this university ranks among the top 10 Australian universities with an annual research expenditure of $36 million. Whether you are here today to receive your first undergraduate degree, a postgraduate coursework degree or a research higher degree, you will have developed skills, knowledge and ability to think logically and laterally. Qualities that are highly valued by employers everywhere and will stand you in good stead in the process of lifelong learning. You are one of 3,642 students who will graduate from the University of Newcastle this semester. Selected data from the profile of graduating students shows some interesting characteristics. 80% of you will be awarded an undergraduate degree, 18% will receive a coursework master's degree, and 2% will be awarded a research master's or a doctor of philosophy degree. It took you approximately 5,000 hours of study to complete the requirements for your degree. 80% of you will have a hex debt. <laughs> your average hex debt is $20,000. So collectively, you owe the Australian government over 50 million. <laughs> this year's graduates, ages range from 20 to 71, and 58% of you are women. Three quarters of you were looking, who were looking for full-time work when you completed your degree will have found it. Your average salary is $35,000 a year, and 2% of you went on to further full-time study. And where do you live? 63% of you live in the Hunter Valley and Central Coast region, and 4% live overseas. Yours is the last generation of Australians who will be the first in their family to gain a university education. The rate of change in our society is such that whatever qualification you've completed, you will need to be engaged in lifelong learning to remain successful 
and competitive in the workforce. I'm confident that the skills you've acquired during your study at this university will stimulate your hunger for more knowledge and understanding. This in turn will equip you to make valuable contributions to the local, national and in the case of some, the international community. I take this opportunity to remind those receiving their test aims today that as graduates of the university you automatically become members of the graduate body, the convocation. You join more than 70,000 other graduates worldwide and have an opportunity through elected representatives to become involved in the governance of your university. I hope that you will do so. I now call on Professor Bill Hogarth, Pro Vice Chancellor of the Faculty of Science and Information Technology, to present graduates from that faculty. Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Design Graphic, Belinda Angelo. <laughs> Mercy Bremel. <laughs> Nicole Good. Marissa McGarry. <laughs> Kelly O'Rourke. <laughs> Sarah Purser. Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Design Visual Communication, Amanda Adams. <laughs> Stuart Bowman. <laughs> Daniel Beer. Megan Ben. <laughs> Linda Burgess. <laughs> Heidi Blythe. <laughs> Timothy Browning. Manchi Maggie Chu. <laughs> Haley Dodd. <laughs> Renee Farrell. <laughs> Selena Fennick. Juliana Yin Teng Fong. <laughs> Kira Foster. <laughs> Shane Green. <laughs> Michael Hazel. Sarah Hogan. <laughs> Beslamay Holt. <laughs> Katrina Jenkins. <laughs> Michael Condor. Shiloh Long. <laughs> Lee 
Elizabeth Lowe. Alicia McGuigan. Peter Most. Shannon Murdoch. Carla Radcliffe. Natalie Robinson. Nerida Smith. Brooke Stephen. Mark Thomas. Helen Toms. Lachlan Webb. Michael Widgery. Kurt Williamson. Adam Wilson. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Design, Visual Communication Honours, Class 2, Division 2, Adam Evans. Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Design, Visual Communication Honours, Class 2, Division 1, Liam Hogan. <laughs> Anne McGonagall. <laughs> Louise Savalensky. Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Design, Visual Communication Honours, Class 1, Claire Enright. <laughs> Shannon Harty. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Environmental Science, Catherine Adkins. Kenneth Barry. <laughs> Elissa Brown. <laughs> Ilana Casey. <laughs> Claire Chambers. Paul Collins. Nathan Cooper. Lee Cruden. Matthew Egan. Michael Evans. Grant Farrow. Daniel Harris. Stephen Honeywood. Oliver Hosky. Man 
Amanda Hyde. <laughs> Sabine Jamison. <laughs> Darren Kane. <laughs> Clover Kane. Grant Moylan. <laughs> Kieran Musgrave. <laughs> Jenny Oosterveen. <laughs> Jason Parsons. Benjamin Pascoe. <laughs> Sean Phillipson. <laughs> Adam Plant. <laughs> Julie Pownall. Smith, Amy Young, Rebecca Young, Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Environmental Science Honours. Class 2, Division 1, Alan Garland. <laughs> Michelle Hurst. <laughs> Daniel Waters. Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Environmental Science Honours, Class 1, Catherine Target. <laughs> Chancellor, the award of the University Medal is a rare honour made only when there is a candidate of sufficient merit. To be considered for this award, a graduate must have a consistent record of exceptional academic achievement at all levels of a bachelor's degree program and qualify for a bachelor's degree with first class honours. I present to you a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Environmental Science Honours Class 1 and University Medalist, Karen Duran. Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Information Science, Carol Barnett. Adam Bennis. Rebecca Brown. Peter Camp. Sian Clark, <laughs> Philip Couch, <laughs> Timothy Desmond, <laughs> Renee Dickey. Jason Dyson. <laughs> Michael Farrell.
Ryan Forbes. <laughs> Sumit Gandura. <laughs> Trent Goodall. <laughs> Joel Gorman. Christine Hodgkins. Grant Howie. Stephen Ileski. Matthew James. Alan Kelly. Christopher Lang. Todd Lehman. James Lewis. Jessica McQuillan. <laughs> Michael Minto. <laughs> Natalie Mitchell. <laughs> Russell Newman. Rose Nguyen. Andrew Wong. Nicole Pascoe. Andrew Patterson. Rebecca Reading. Luke Robertson. Daniel Schley. Simon Williams. Benjamin Wilson. Timothy Windever. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Mathematics, Emily Anderson. <laughs> Philip Brooker. Kieran Brooks. <laughs> Paul Faulkner. <laughs> Rebecca Holt. <laughs> Benjamin Horn. Brent Hudson. <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> Darren McQuillan. <laughs> Basil Rana.
Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Mathematics, Bachelor of Arts. This graduate has studied for both of these awards simultaneously. Charlotte Bird. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Mathematics and Bachelor of Computer Science. These graduates have studied for both of these awards simultaneously. Nathan Colbert. <laughs> Gavin Cooper. <laughs> Christopher Rayner. Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Mathematics, Bachelor of Science. The graduate has studied for both of these awards simultaneously. Rachel Poole. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Mathematics Honours, Class 1, and a university medalist, Catherine Chisholm. Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Psychology with Honours Class 2, Division 2, Davina Bradley. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Psychology with Honours Class 2, Division 1, Megan Armstrong. Peter Harper. <laughs> Kylie Jones. <laughs> Stacey Mortimer. <laughs> Emma Peterson. Stephen. <laughs> Chancellor, I will now ask Associate Professor Tim Roberts, Deputy Executive Dean of the Faculty of Science and Information Technology, to present the remaining graduates of the faculty. Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Science, Jennifer Addison Jones. <laughs> Jennifer Allen. <laughs> Jan Bell. James Broska, <laughs> Ashley Brown, <laughs> Renee Bull, <laughs> Lisa Bergen. Tanya Cherry. <laughs> Shane Considine. <laughs> Christina Cooper. <laughs> Cameron Cuff. Tristan Densham.
Jacqueline Harris. Christy Hermans. Aaron Ivory. Benjamin Jones. Felicity Kite. Renee Langaluga. Elizabeth Lawson. Kula Lee. Julian Lewis. Glenn Mallaby. Nathan Malley. Aaron Malloy. Louise Neville. Lisa Osborne. Andrew Parker. Adam Ross. Arjun Sida. Lauren Sims. Stephen White. Emma Jane Wooden. Christy Young. Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts. The graduate has studied for both of these awards simultaneously, Kate Shearston. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Mathematics. The graduate has studied for both of these awards simultaneously, Christopher Foster. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Science Honours, Class 3, Ross Beasley. Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Science Honours, Class 2, Division 2, Adam Landau. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Science Honours, Class 1, Louise Askew. Belinda Attard. <laughs> Daniel Cotton. <laughs> Mitchell Paul. <laughs> Nicolette Tape. Ella Thompson.
Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Science Honours, Class One, and University Medalist, Craig Evans. Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Science Aviation, Chad Campbell. <laughs> Barry Carmichael. <laughs> James Davidson. Justin Evans. <laughs> Peter Flack. <laughs> Stephen Friedman. <laughs> Kathy Gallagher. Brent Graham. <laughs> Damien Hart. <laughs> Mark Hodgson. <laughs> Daniel Huey. Ananda Aya. <laughs> Tristan Membry. <laughs> Adam Stoker. <laughs> Carly Williams. Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Science Biotechnology, Abigail Atwell Heap. <laughs> Mark Bevan. Well done, Mark. <laughs> Kim Dibley. Linda Dirx. <laughs> Michelle Hodgson. <laughs> Stephen Jackson. <laughs> Ian McDougall. Shelley Martin. <laughs> Brooke Matheson. <laughs> Donna Meredith. <laughs> Karen Schrader. Rebecca Scott. <laughs> Joanna Taylor. <laughs> Elizabeth Tyndall. <laughs> Janet Wallman. Andrew Walsh.
Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Science Biotechnology Honours, Class Two, Division One, Suzanne Murdoch. Linda Soldas. <laughs> Simone Tanek. <laughs> Agnieszka Vicklund. Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Science Biotechnology Honours, Class 1, David McIntyre. <laughs> Jonathan Paul. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Science Forensic, Philippa Armstrong. <laughs> Rhiannon Barnard. <laughs> Yasmin Bell. <laughs> Miriam Brown. Mirelle Devine. <laughs> Gabrielle Founders. <laughs> Marilyn Hurst. <laughs> Trevor Hyde. Melissa Jolly. <laughs> Clara Krivenek. <laughs> Claudia Lawson. <laughs> Amy Love. Andrew Prowse. <laughs> Michelle Sirash. <laughs> Marion Smith. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Science Forensic, Honours Class One. Luke O'Dell. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Science Professional Honours, Class Two, Division One, Brendan Griggs. <laughs> and Brett McKay. Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Science Professional, Honours, Class 1, David Green. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Science Psychology, Colby Hill. Vasco Ilyevsky. <laughs> Stacy McMullen. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Science Psychology with honours Class Two, Division One, Eliza Fraser. Benjamin Hainsworth. <laughs> Matthew Hughes.
Tracy Lewis. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Science Psychology with Honours Class 1, Annette Babakani. Antonia Brogan. And Penny Newson. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Science Psychology, Honours, Class One, and University Medalist, Natasha Matthew. Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Master of Environmental and Business Management, Ian McNichol. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Master of Environmental Studies, Peter Bauer. <laughs> Barry Eshteves. Chancellor, I present to you graduates of the degree of Master of Information Technology, Ba Seng Chen. <laughs> Yuck Hoi Cheng. <laughs> Kanyang Gao. Yung Sok Ha. Arindam Hajra. Paul Hansen. V.J. Jagannathan. <laughs> Ahmed Kosone. <laughs> V.P. Pavan Kuma. <laughs> Pensiri Pornchok Chai. Vidyasaga Potta <laughs> Nonthan Porn Sat Kum <laughs> Kyu Ping Wang Lan Young. <laughs> Wen Yi. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you a graduate of the degree of Master of Scientific Studies, Sherin Tsariye. Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of graduates from the Faculty of Science and Information Technology. I, I call on Professor Ron MacDonald, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Research and International, to present research higher degree graduates.
Chancellor. A research higher degree is awarded to a graduate who has successfully completed a program of study which is primarily research. A thesis embodying the outcomes of the research is the principal basis of examination. Today, the university is proud to honour graduates who have satisfied the rigorous criteria for the award of a research master's and soon for the award of a, uh, of a doctor of philosophy. Chancellor, I present to you Naomi Gadd for the degree of Master of Psychology Clinical. Ms Gadd's thesis is entitled Development of a Measure of Post-Traumatic Amnesia, PTA, in Children. Chancellor Naomi Gadd. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you Sally Hunt for the degree of Master of Psychology Clinical. Ms Hunt's thesis is entitled Children's Eyewitness Memory, Context, Reinstatement and Suggestibility. Chancellor Sally Hunt. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you Peter Sneesby for the degree of Master of Psychology Clinical. Mr Sneesby's thesis is entitled An Evaluation of Dialectical Behaviour Therapy in the Treatment of Borderline Personality Disorder. Chancellor Peter Sneesby. Chancellor, the degree of Doctor of Philosophy is only awarded if the thesis makes a significant and an original contribution to knowledge and to our understanding of the field of knowledge within, with, within which the, the study is conducted. I'm pleased to present the following graduates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. These graduates have studied for an intense four years and their thesis is assessed by an international panel of experts in their field. Chancellor, I present to you Lisa Thomas, Bachelor of Science, Aviation Honours from the University of Newcastle for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Dr Thomas's thesis is entitled The Visual Landing Approach as Expressed in Australian General Aviation Pilots Freeform Concept Maps. Chancellor, Dr Thomas. Chancellor, I present to you Matthew Roth, Bachelor of Arts Honours from the University of Newcastle for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Dr Roth's thesis is entitled, I Want to be Global, Theorising the Gent Gentrification Class as an Emergent Elite Global Community. Chancellor, Dr Roth. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you Jensang Zai, Bachelor of Science from Fudan University for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Dr Zai's thesis is entitled Atomic Layer-by-Layer -layer Composition Depth Profiling Using Electron and Low Energy Ion Spectroscopy. Chancellor, Dr Zai. <laughs> Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of research higher degree graduates. I now call upon the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Roger Holmes, to present a candidate for an honorary degree. Chancellor, I have pleasure in presenting to you Professor Ralph Slatcher for admission to the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. Chancellor, Ralph Owen Slatcher was born in Melbourne on the 16th of April, 1929. He was educated at Perth Modern School, the Wesley College in Perth, and the University of Western Australia. He joined the CSIRO as a research scientist in 1951 and quickly established an international reputation for his research on the effects of environmental factors on plants and plant communities. He was appointed Chief Research Scientist and Associate Chief of the Division of Land Research in 1966. Ralph Slatcher's university career began in 1967 when he was appointed Professor of Biology and Head of the Department of Environmental Biology 
at the Research School of Biological Sciences at the Australian National University. He held that appointment until 1992. And during that time, he held other short-term academic appointments at Duke University in North Carolina and the University of California at Santa Barbara. Professor Slatcher was chair and a member of the Australian National Commission for the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization from 1970. He served as Australian ambassador to UNESCO from 1978 to 1981. He was chair of the Australian Science and Technology Council for five years from 1982. During that time, the government acted on recommendations from the Council for the introduction of the 150% tax deduction for industrial research and development, for future directions of the CSIRO, and for the establishment of the Australian Research Council. In 1989, Professor Slatcher was appointed Australia's first chief scientist and advisor to the Prime Minister on science and technology. He oversaw the establishment of the Prime Minister's Science Council and of the Coordination Committee on Science and Technology. He was the architect of the Cooperative Research Centres program and chaired the Cooper Cooperative Research Centres Committee from its inception until 1993. On stepping down from the post of Chief Scientist in 1992, he served as Chair of the Australian Foundation for Science until 1994. Ralph Slatcher has been active in national and international environmental activities. He's been President of the Ecological Society of Australia, Chair of the Australian Biological Resources Study during the time when the Flora and Fauna of Australian projects were launched, a member of the Policy Advisory Council and the Board of Management of the Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research, and Deputy Chair of the National Greenhouse Advisory Committee. He has chaired the review on the, of the Bureau of Meteorology, the expert panel on world heritage values of Australia's forested regions, and the working group on access to Australia's genetic resources. Internationally, he was closely involved in the establishment and development of the major UNESCO intergovernmental program, Man and the Biosphere, as well as being involved with the International Scientific Committee on Problems of the Environment. He held executive positions with both bodies. He played an active role in the World Heritage Convention and was chair of the World Heritage Committee from 1981 to 1983. Professor Slatcher's contribution to science and technology have been recognised in many ways. In 1982, he was appointed an Officer of the Order of Australia for contributions to science and in 1993 was appointed a Companion of the Order of Australia for contributions to science and technology and their applications to industry and the environment. He has been awarded honorary degrees by the University of Western Australia, Duke University, the University of Queensland and Charles Sturt University. He received the Medal of the Australian and New Zealand Association for the Advancement of Science in 1991. In 2001 he received the Clooney's Ross Medal for lifetime contributions to science and technology. Chancellor, it is with great pleasure that I present to you Ralph Slatcher, Bachelor of Science Agriculture, Master of Science Agriculture, Doctor of Science Agriculture from the University of Western Australia, Doctor of Science Honoris Causa from the University of Western Australia, Doctor of Science Honoris Causa from Duke University, Doctor of Science Honoris Causa from the University of Queensland, Doctor of Applied Science Honoris Causa from Charles Sturt University, Companion of the Order of Australia for admission to the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. By the authority delegated in me by the Council, I hereby admit Ralph Slatcher to the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. We'll now have a musical interlude called Dream Snake. Mick Davidson and Greg Boddy have been performing as a duo since 2001. 
Mick is studying for his Master of Creative Arts at our Conservatorium of Music and Greg is a member of the staff here at the University. The piece they will play today is a new composition written by them called Dream Snake. The piece evokes the sounds and atmospheres of the wet season in the north of Australia with its thunderstorms and rain clouds and of course the weaving path of the rainbow serpent as it crosses the vast outback land. Dream Snake uses Mick's new didgeridoo notation system, especially created as part of his master's studies. The system enables other instruments to be coordinated precisely with his. For this composition, Mick will also use a special breathing technique which allows him to blend and play two and three sounds simultaneously, creating a layered effect behind Greg's guitar melodies.
Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to invite Mr. Patrick Filmasanke to deliver the occasional address. Patrick Filmasanke was the director of the Newcastle Regional Museum from 1992 to 1998, where he was responsible for the revitalization of the organization and increasing its profile. He spent the following two years as the director of museums and art galleries in the Northern Territory. A highlight of that period being the opening of the Museum of Central Australia. He was appointed Deputy Director of the Australian Museum in November 2000. Originally trained as a marine biologist, Patrick's career in museums started at the Museum of Victoria in 1974, followed by positions at the British Museum of Natural History, the British Museum of Antiquities, and at the Australian Museum in the Marine Invertebrates Division. He has published articles in biology and in museology. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mr. Patrick Filmasanke. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, the purpose of this whole day is to congratulate you on your fantastic and long awaited achievement. And this, of course, we are all gathered here to do from the bottom of our hearts. You are science graduates, and that means a lot, and it means some odd things that perhaps you may just not have considered as yet. Science is not a dry, restrictive, uh, uniform, or regimented form of, uh, of uh, occupation. It's passionate, urgent, it's driven by reason, luck, and imagination. It's not something that is necessarily safe or you can step back from. If we look at some scientific biographies, I think, and I'm picking a few extreme examples here, it illustrates what I mean about passion and luck and diversity. One of my favorite scientists is a Russian geneticist called Vavilov. Vavilov, in the midst of the desperate siege of Leningrad in the Second World War, drove out thousands of tons of material that could have been eaten by the desperate defenders when they themselves were eating wallpaper and the glue that held furniture joints together. Vavilov took this food away and took it behind the lines because it represented the future. It was the Russian genetic food stock. It was the collection of tens of years of agriculture that ensured a broad genetic base. Vavilov himself was later killed by the NKVD because he refused to give up Darwinism and, uh, and therefore uh, committed a political crime in the Soviet Union at the time and paid for it. Another great hero of science, somebody we know well, Newton, mad as a hatter for most of his life because of his, exper his experiments with mercury, yet unquestionably the grandfather, if not the father, of modernism as we know it. At the Australian Museum, my office is in the room of a man called Gerard Kreft. Kreft was an extraordinary man who opened up the science of Australian paleontology, who broke open the mysteries of biogeography, although that wasn't a term used then, and vertebrate history of Australia. He, unfortunately, was a dedicated man, no politician, was accused of all sorts of things by the trust he fell out with, including the sale of pornographic photographs, and was thrown out of what is now my office by two prize fighters called Kelly and dumped in the middle of William Street and died shortly afterwards in terrible poverty in, in Surrey Hills, an Australian martyr for science, if you will. Think of people like Darwin and Wallace. What different backgrounds coming up with the same extraordinary breakthroughs? Darwin, middle class, comfortable, working in luxury, working over decades on his great idea of evolution by natural selection. Wallace, a self-made man, tossing in a malaria fit somewhere in the, the archipelagos to our north, had exactly the same idea at the same time. Science is very forgiving and very broad and very surprising. Marie Curie, killed by the very elements that she with increasing efficiency refined in the first explorations of radioactivity. They may have taken her life, but they won her immortality with her Nobel Prize. Possibly my, one of my favorite other biographies or little stories of science is the organic chemist Kekul. Everybody knows, or many people know, his, his vision 
of the closed carbon ring in organic chemistry that he had allegedly while drifting off comfortably in front of a fire uh, one night with a glass of wine in his hand that opened up many aspects of uh, organic chemistry. Few people know that he had a second dream a little while later on a rain-filled um, uh, night on the top of a Clapham omnibus in London where he dreamt of double bonds and thus pushed uh, organic chemistry even further. Science is a broad church. It's filled with poignance, heroism, comedy, and tragedy. Loved by some, misunderstood by many. Think of W.H. Auden, the English poet, who said, when I find myself in the company of scientists, I feel like a shabby curate who has accidentally wandered into a drawing room full of dukes. Or the other English poet, Blake, who said, art is the tree of life, science is the tree of death. Take your pick, ladies and gentlemen. I think a surprising point that I want to make, and one that may not have occurred to you yet, is that you haven't just graduated. Today, ladies and gentlemen, you have been initiated. Science and scientific thinking is very much a way of life. If you never darken another laboratory door in the rest of your life, if you never turn on a PC to do anything except to read your emails, it doesn't matter. If you worked on tunneling electrons or burrowing rodents, it, your discipline is irrelevant. You have been brought into the fold of science. Your situation is rather like that of, uh, of students in, in kung fu movies. I'm sure you know the, the classic analogy. The student works for the implacable master year after year, sweeping the floor of the temple, picking up the hot cauldron with his hands, performing, or her hands, performing acts of apparent menial irrelevance until at the end, suddenly, they find themselves imbued with extraordinary powers which are then uh, put to the service of mankind. In your case, you have worked on, used, lived with, and been armed with the best intellectual tool that human history has yet devised, the scientific method. It's powerful because at its very core is its humble acknowledgement that it can prove nothing. Uh, and on the other hand, the certainty that it can disprove anything that is false and can be tested. You indeed, during your difficult apprenticeship, um, which is acknowledged here at this initiation, have been given a great power. You've been given the power to think, to discern, and to doubt constructively. Take as your motto, or at least consider taking as your motto, that of the Royal Society of Science, founded in 1662 in London, which goes, nullius in verba. Loosely translated, that means, don't trust what anybody tells you. Uh, or you can go a little further back to Descartes himself, I think, therefore I am. That's your starting point. What you know is what forms the basis of where you proceed to. Everything should be tested. Don't take anything on faith. This is what you've been taught over those last few years. Shun smug certainty. Reward um, those people who seek and test their own paths. Reject received wisdom. Fundamentalism in all its forms, be it religious, personal, political. Think for yourself. That's what you've been given the gift of doing. Yours is a vigorous, demanding, incremental kind of philosophy, rather Puritan, if you will. Uh, applying such discipline is hard, and goodness knows we all fail repeatedly in attempting to do so. It can be boring, and it can be unromantic. But you have, if you will, tasted the fruit, and you have an obligation where it counts to think rather than just feel, and sometimes to act where inaction might be more comfortable. Ladies and gentlemen, be active, be rigorous, apply your new powers, be the salt, leaven our increasingly introverted and herdable community. Question, act, engage. You have the capacity to do that. You're just at the beginning. Now, you have to leave the monastery, so to speak, and go out there and make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations.
Thank you very much, Patrick Fulmasanki. I now have pleasure in inviting Karen Durand, Bachelor of Environmental Science Honours, Class 1, and University Medalist, to speak on behalf of the graduates. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, members of the Council, staff of the University, families and friends of graduates, and most importantly, graduates. Today I'm honoured to be speaking on behalf of the graduates of the Faculty of Science and Information Technology. As a group of individuals who have applied themselves to learning under a wide range of disciplines, we will be working in careers centred around scientific research, social science and environmental management, design, information technology, mathematics, aviation, philosophy and psychology. Yet during our years at university, we have shared important and valuable learning experiences, which have not only equipped us with the knowledge to begin a career in our chosen field, but have extended into the realm of what makes a more complete human being. In respect to the academic gaining of knowledge, I'm here to acknowledge the University of Newcastle. The institution which today awards us our degree is made up of lecturers, administrators, technicians, research assistants and general staff who have worked to increase our understanding and to assist us in countless ways. We are indebted to those who have imparted their skill and knowledge, who have inspired us to learn, to think and to create, and who have encouraged us to be world changers. On behalf of all the graduates, thank you. In, res in respect to the growth of each of us as complete human beings, I also acknowledge the University of Newcastle. For whether we are young or mature aged, male or female, parent or as yet child, we have all benefited from the lessons of life gained during our study here. Whatever our discipline, we have each learned from the challenges of following guidelines, meeting deadlines, or indeed, waiting in other lines, such as those which exist near the flexiteller, printery, or the most testing of all, the computer rooms at the TC building. Many of us have become clever financial managers on shoestring budgets and have become skilled at achieving goals with the resources at hand, which is an invaluable skill in a world with an ever-shrinking resource pool. To these we can add communication skills, teamwork, the ability to think, reason, research and act to bring about chosen objectives. For these valuable life lessons we also say thank you. To family and friends who have encouraged and supported us throughout our years of learning, we also owe a debt of gratitude. You have a part in our achievement today. We are truly grateful, even if we do not always take the time to say so in so many words. Thank you. In closing, I would like to congratulate each and every graduate. You have earned a degree, which is a great achievement. If your experience has been like mine, you have also broadened the mind and expanded your worldview. I would encourage each of you to continue to learn and to grow as a unique and valuable human being. Respect each other's achievements throughout your career, for the research scientist can be guided by the ethicist and philosopher. The philosopher can ground ethics in the real life experience of the social scientist, manager and designer. And these in turn can employ the knowledge of the technologist and research scientist. Once again, congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Karen Duran, for those words. I now declare the ceremony concluded. I hope you enjoyed today's ceremony and thank you for joining the university community in the celebration of the conferring of degrees. The University Union invites you to make your way to the Brennan Room in the Shortland Union where refreshments are available.